A federal judge just unloads on Bob Mueller's legal team, suggesting that they're lying and only out to get Trump. Huh, does that sound familiar? District Judge T.S. Ellis is hearing the case against former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort in the Eastern District of Virginia. And in court today, he blasted the special counsel's legal team, questioning their motives and even their honesty. Ellis told, told prosecutors, you don't really care about Mr. Manafort. You really care about what information Mr. Manafort can give you to lead you to Mr. Trump in an impeachment or whatever. The judge demanded to see the so-called scope memo outlining the range of Mueller's Russia probe. And when prosecutors objected it is unrelated material, Ellis retorted, I'll be the judge of that. And then he added, we don't want anyone in this country with unfettered power. It's unlikely you're going to persuade me the special prosecutor has the power to do anything he or she wants. The American people feel pretty strongly that no one has unfettered power. Well, a delighted President Trump broke news of the hearing to the NRA annual meeting in Dallas this afternoon. A highly, a highly respected, respected judge, judge in Virginia, Virginia made statements. It, it, says, says, Wall Street it says, says Wall Street Journal, it says, says judge, judge questions, questions Mueller's authority, authority to prosecute Manafort. Manafort. Judge T.S. Ellis, who is really something, something very, very special, special, I hear from many standpoints. He's a respected person. Suggested, suggested the charges, charges before the U.S. U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia were just part of the Mueller team's designs to pressure Mr. Manafort into giving up information on President Donald Trump or others in the campaign. I've been saying that for a long time. It's a witch hunt. Well, let's review these developments with House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunez. We have a lot to talk about with him. Chairman Nunez, it's good to see you. Uh, T.S. Ellis, I know very well. Uh, he is a senior judge in the Eastern District of Virginia. I remember a long time ago I interviewed with him. I think I even argued a case before him uh, at one point. Very well respected. Appointed by Res uh, President Reagan back in 1987. Uh, but he was brutal on the, uh, the counsel who was arguing the case, Michael Dreben, who is the, uh, uh, basically a, a deputy solicitor general who's now in the Mueller office. What were your thoughts on his comments about how this is really outside the scope of the Mueller authority? I was astonished by the comments the judge made today, although it's not surprising. Everything in this case, Laura, has just gone off the rails. Uh, there's not a day that goes by that something new, crazy, uh, doesn't break. You know, finally, uh, just today, we were able to get the two pages that we needed that we now know that Comey and McCabe uh, did, in fact, say that General Flynn, uh, you know, the agents that interviewed General Flynn didn't think he was lying. Now, we listened to Mr. Comey over the last uh, three weeks run around saying just the opposite. So you have the judge saying that they're lying, that the Mueller team's lying. You now have... Uh, the case where we now know that Mr. Comey has been lying out there publicly. Uh, this continues to just, I think, uh, it's bewildering, quite frankly. Now, Congressman, uh, Jim Comey basically decided to override the agents, including Peter Strzok, who, you know, we focus on Strzok's texts with Lisa Page and maybe as an animus against President Trump. But I believe, unless I'm wrong, I believe Peter Strzok was one of the agents who interviewed Mike Flynn and we had heard this from some time, now confirmed that Mike Flynn didn't lie. At least it was up to them, meaning poor Mike Flynn, they had the, twisted the screws on him to plead guilty to a false statement mm -hmm. in order to, you know, like a lot of people do, save their family, save their whatever money they have left. And, and meanwhile, Comey's going around saying, oh, no, no, he lied. And this is, you know, it, it, it's, it's wild. Why would, and, he, and why would he override the agent? That's isn't... my question. Well, look, this isn't new news to us on the Intelligence Committee. This has been the problem of all these issues that they keep classified from the American people. So we knew this very shortly after the interview uh, took place. Mr. The interview where the FBI agents went into the White House and interviewed Mr. Flynn. Shortly after that, Mr. Comey comes and briefs us. That's on the record. I know he also briefed other committees. So on the record, we knew what Mr. Comey said. We had the transcripts. We have been fighting with the Department of Justice and the FBI for six weeks 
to release this information to the American people. We finally have it tonight, late on a Friday night. This is totally unacceptable. You have the judge from this morning. This is just continued ridiculous behavior. It's like they just want to keep digging. And the American people are beginning to understand that the Department of Justice and the FBI have major problems. I have no idea how they can investigate themselves, but evidently they continue to believe they can. But they have so many more documents that they have to provide to us that we, that we needed like yesterday. And I hate to have to continue to come out publicly and talk about this that we are well, still well, you, missing let, let documents me just get, let me just remind to our everybody. investigation. Yeah, let, let's remind everyone. A few weeks ago, you were on the show. I believe it was a Friday night, if my memory serves me correct. Maybe it was a Thursday night. And you essentially threatened uh, Rod Rosenstein with contempt of Congress or impeachment if uh, the underlying document, the computer uh, document that authorized the probe uh, of the uh, spying on Car Carter Page, surveillance on Carter Page, wasn't released. He did finally then release mm -hmm. that, uh, Congressman Nunez. However, now uh, you're getting slammed in response by CNN and now others that you ask for these documents and then you, Devin Nunez, have a staffer read them. You don't read them. So how serious are you? You just want to help the president. You're not even reading the documents. What about that CNN report that came out today? Yeah, so look, I, I enjoy being attacked. The first thing I will tell you is whatever CNN and the New York Times uh, write or talk about, uh, I don't read their information, I will tell you that. Uh, we're not going to get into the specifics about how we conduct our, our investigation, but I will tell you, Laura, and I've said this numerous times on, on your show and others, is that Mr. Gowdy uh, is our lead investigator. Mr. Gowdy is the one who reviews all the initial documents with our investigators. I'm not going to get into the processes that we use, uh, but as the chairman of the committee, uh, when they need documents, they come to me. We use the power that we have vested in us by the Constitution to try to force the Department of Justice and the FBI to comply with the I know, with but you can see requests. the criticism, you know, Congressman. I'm trying Mr. to help Gowdy, you. Is it? Yeah, I'm trying to help our viewers understand this, though. Mr. When, you're, when they come after you and say, Nunez is, is getting, get, getting these documents, I think a lot of people want you to have these documents, then you don't read them. It, it opens you up to criticism. So, I mean, I don't understand why it compromises the investigation for you to say, I read the documents that are necessary to do this investigation, and I consult with my staff on the, you know, on, on the primary documents, but I read them. So I don't understand why your reluctance to say whether you read them or don't read them. I don't get that. Uh, well, look, this is, uh, first of all, what they're talking about there in that is, is it, it's a page and a half. Uh, what, what specifically we were looking for in that, as you may remember, is we are looking, we're, we're investigating the State Department. We are looking for any official intelligence that came across through the Five Eyes channels. That's what we were looking for. Uh, that was not in the document. So at that point, at this point, we have other lines of inquiry that we're going down. We have okay. a subpoena out there. And so, uh, you know, this is, this is why, uh, you know, we can play process games all the time. Uh, but at the all day long, but at the end of the day here, yeah. uh, you know, we continue to have our investigation blocked. We continue Dragged to out. have to deal with the disinformation campaigns. Well, and, they, and, they, and this is what the left always does. Just so, I mean, everyone who watches this show understands because they've done it to me. They've tried to. When you're effective and when you're holding people accountable and if you are conservative or if you've ever supported the president, you are a target. And so that's why, you know, all the articles floating around about you and Paul Ryan should take you off the committee. That was a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's predictable. I want to read uh, for you a, uh, a, a comment by Eric Lichtblau about what's happened to the FBI. He said, many view Trump's attacks as self-serving. He's called the renowned agency an embarrassment to our country and its investigations of its bu his business and political dealings as a witch hunt. But as much as the Bureau's roughly 14,000 special agents might like to tune out the news, internal and external reports have found lapses throughout the agency and longtime observers looking past the partisan haze see a troubling picture. Something really is wrong at the FBI. Now, that's not Devin Nunez saying that. That is uh, 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 Licklau saying it. Yeah, this is uh, what I've, uh, I've actually conveyed this to Director Ray. Uh, he has a tough, tough job to do. He needs to clean the place up. I've said this also publicly. There, we don't see a systemic pro problem out in the field with field agents or with people overseas that are doing very difficult work trying to track down terrorists and other bad guys. 
where we do see a problem uh, is in Washington, D.C. Now, to Director Ray's credit, you have seen many of the Comey-era people have been excused. That's a good sign. Good. What would be even better is if Director Ray made sure that we get this information that we need in a timely manner. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it.